Allo impressed me with their Digi1 SPDIF board and US Bridge USB board for the Raspberry Pi. Their Piano series of DAC boards were less to my liking. They are clearly aimed at a different market. I heard more positive words on the BOSS and just when I was ready to take a look I was notified an update version would become available at short notice. The Allo BOSS version 1.2. Allo has two lines of audio products, one for the Raspberry Pi and one for their small board computer, the Sparky. Their US Bridge, for instance, is designed for the Sparky as where the Digi1 is designed for the Raspberry Pi. See the two reviews I did, the link is in the show notes. The Buzz is also designed for the Raspberry Pi. It is, in essence, a digital audio converter with only an i as input. I2S is a digital audio bus that was designed for use inside a device, like a CD player. The somewhat strange name is an abbreviation from Inter IC Sound, IIS. Techies of course changed that to I2S. It uses separate buses for the clock and the serial data. The bus board uses the so called I2S master mode, where the clock oscillators on the bus are in control, hence the name BOSS I suppose. This way the for audio poor clocking signal of the Raspberry Pi is omitted. There is nothing wrong with the Raspberry Pi but it is not designed to do high quality audio rendering. The I2S master mode solves one problem. Another is the polluted power supply when the DAC board is fed from the voltage bus on the Raspberry Pi. Of course this can be filtered, the BOSS even splits up the power in three separately filtered and regulated voltages. One for the digital audio part, one for the analog audio part and one for the clock oscillator. But the best solution is not to use power from the Raspberry Pi. That is why I soldered print headers on the Hi-Fi Berry boards, see the link in the show notes. And that is why the BOSS has a separate power input on the board in the shape of a USB-C connector. You can still feed the BOSS Raspberry Pi combination over the micro USB power input on the Raspberry Pi, which is the least optimal, feed the combination over the USB-C connector on the BOSS, which is a better option, or remove a jumper and feed the Raspberry Pi and BOSS separately, which is the best option. People in forums often focus on the DAC chip used. But it is not only the DAC chip that makes a DAC unique. It is the quality of the power supply, the jitter of the digital bus and the precision of the clock oscillator that drives the DAC chip. Then there is the quality of the analog part that converts the current coming from the DAC chip to a voltage to drive the amplifier. The power supply, of course, is external. So you can choose your own and, as reported, you can use separate power supplies for the Raspberry Pi and the BOSS. Note that you need a power supply with a mini USB-A connector for the Raspberry Pi and one with a USB-C connector for the BOSS. Next to that USB-C connector you find the jumper to disconnect the power supply connection between the Raspberry Pi and the BOSS, essential if you do use two power supplies. And while we are here, the Texas Instruments PCM5122 DAC chip, sub-branded by Brown, is situated here. The double NDK oscillators are in the shielded housing with next to it two clock distributors. So there are separate clocks for 44.1 kHz based and 48 kHz based clock frequencies. For those that want to connect the Allo Volt Class DM port, an audio connection is provided in this header while 5 volts and a mute signal is sent using the extended GPIO header. Those small surface mounted components make it very hard to identify the voltage regulators, but according to the info by Allo, linear LT3042 regulators are used. In the analog stages I found film capacitors which are easier to identify, just like the supercapacitor on the rear of the board that provides extra current when needed. All these measures 
plus the print layout influence the audio quality. I have said it before, I measure all equipment but I am very reluctant to show the measurements, not to scare people off with incomprehensible graphs. But this one is not hard to understand and quite illustrative. It is a spectrum of the noise. It shows that a sampling frequency at 44.0801 kHz leaks through, together with some interference or clock signal at about 31 kHz. Nothing to worry about for it's still at a low level. It clearly sticks out since the overall noise is very low. Which by the way is what you want. Now this graph shows another thing since it combines two measurements. The green lines being measured with the S-Booster power supply and the blue lines being measured with a switching mode power supply as is often sold with the Raspberry Pi for less than 10 euros. Now it's only a few dBs, but it's also far less stable, so it's probably causing other irregularities too. But enough tech. Since I have discovered that Volumio, PiCore Player and Ropier all sound the same, I only use Ropier for the listening tests. It is a very fine self-installing Rune Ready Endpoint software for the Raspberry Pi and it supports many audio boards including the Allo Boss. See the link in the show notes for my review. I skipped powering through the Raspberry Pi and only concentrated on powering the Raspberry Pi through the Boss with either the El Cheapo Walward or the S Booster. I have explained before that a DAC is in essence the same as a digital controlled beer tap. If you feed the tap with quality beer at the correct pressure and temperature and if the digital control signal is flawless you get a perfect beer time after time. But feed it with low quality beer and you get a poor beer time after time. Now substitute the beer with electric power and the tap with the DAC. The digital control signal is a digital audio signal that defines how wide the tap will be opened and thus how much current is passing through the DAC. A so called current to voltage circuit converts that to the output voltage. As with the beer, if you feed a DAC with polluted power, the output of the DAC will produce portions of that polluted power resulting in a more or less distorted signal. I can tell you that using the El Cheapo power supply is an insult to the designers of the boss. At least buy an iFi iPower or Audiophonics power supply and if you can spare the money go for the S Booster. See the link in the show notes for the review of these three. You can use the El Cheapo power supply to power the Raspberry Pi and then use one of the aforementioned quality ones to power the boss. That gives the best result, although you always should be careful with cheap switching mode power supplies for they also pollute the mains and could influence for instance your amp this way. That's why I always use a mains filter to use these power supplies on. Up till now I found the Raspberry Pi with DAC board to fit only my setup 3, my sub 1000 euro reference. The boss places itself in the lower end of my setup too, which is clearly more critical and costs around 4000 euros. Now don't get me wrong, it's not the US bridge with court mojo, but the limitations, every DAC has a level of limitations, don't get in the way of enjoying music. The stereo image isn't as wide and deep, it's not that open and analytic. But for instance sibilance is surprisingly well controlled and again it is clearly better than other DAC boards for the Raspberry Pi. I would easily listen to it in my setup too for hours without fatigue. At 68 euros the bus version 1.2 clearly isn't the cheapest DAC board around. It simply can't be given the components used. And then don't forget to order the spacers, a USB-C adapter for the power and a housing. A complete kit including a micro SD card with an operating system and software to your choice installed will set you back 125 euros. 
For that money you can have a streamer, renderer or run endpoint depending on the choice of software. I challenge you to find an equally good surrounding streamer, renderer or run endpoint for that money. A Sonos or Blue Sound will cost clearly more and certainly the Sonos Connect will sound less. Of course, the software by Sonos and Blue Sound is clearly superior to the software available for the Pi. But regardless whether you use Volumio Pi Core Player, Ropier or any other piece of software, it usually will be free. Isn't this a lovely time where you can buy a complete Boss 1.2 Player kit plus hard disk, install Volumio or Equal and you have a complete streamer for less than 200 euros? Did I mention developments in digital audio go rapid? Therefore subscribe to this channel or follow me on Twitter, Facebook or Google+. See the show notes for the links. If you have a question post it below this video but please don't ask me for buying advice. See my about questions video to find out why. If you like this video please consider supporting the channel through Patreon and see super exclusive videos too. Just one dollar a month will do. The link is in the show notes. And don't forget to tell your friends on the web about this channel. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HBproject.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.